This is the Morning Swim Show for Monday, December 6, 2010. I'm your host, Peter Bush, in the Phoenix Monitor today. We'll talk to Mark Dilla, the Georgia Bulldog senior, is one of the best 200 flyers in the country. And Mark joins us right now in the Phoenix Monitor from Athens, Georgia. Mark, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Yeah, doing well. Thanks for having me. How often do you think about that DQ at last year's NCAAs? Uh... You know, you think about it, but I don't let it affect anything. Uh, it's something that's happened, and you have to move on. Uh, it's not like anything's going to change at this point. And, uh, you know, it happened, but there's a lot of things you can take from that race a year ago, and that's what I need to do. Oh, well, what is something that you take away from that race, as you said? Uh, the way I, I split the race, I was really happy with. Um, you know, it's some of uh, the hardest part is, you know, not, not getting anything, you know, uh, not feeling the pride of winning afterward. But, uh, there, you know, it, it transpired this summer with my 200 butterfly at Nationals and the way I swam that race. And, uh, you know, I know what I worked hard for the whole year leading up to that race at NCAAs uh, was working. Um, what I'm doing in training is working. Uh, so everything just kind of builds from there then. How's the training going so far this year? I heard you had some injuries, or is the, everything better now? Yeah, I, I had some minor, you know, groin stuff. Um, just doing dry land, you know, pushing myself, and uh, had a little tweak in my groin there, and had to slow things down for a little bit, but everything seems to be healed up, and uh, I'm swimming well, I feel. Yeah, that's the last thing you want to be swimming with is a tweaked groin, so hopefully you're doing better with that. So, um, all right, so you got second your first year to your teammate. Sean Frazier beat you a sophomore year. You had the short-lived celebration last year with the DQ. It's got to be top of your, top of your to-do list to win that NCAA championship, right? Absolutely, yeah. All right, so is there anyone out there that you see in the field that uh, can deny you of that, or is it really just a matter of you doing what you can do? No, I mean, there's absolutely people out there. Um, you know, nobody's just going to be like, oh, he had a rough swim last year or something like that. You know, he's just going to win. Uh, I know if I was out there and someone else, I sure as heck wouldn't do that. And I don't, I don't want it to be some sort of pity swim or anything like that because that's not what an NCAA championship is. Um, it's it's going to be heavily contested. Uh, you've got, you know, Bobby Boyer is a great swimmer. Uh Tom Shields, freshman last year at Cal, he had an unbelievable year, uh, you know, and he's, I think, just learning to swim the 200 butterfly. Um, there's guys, you know, there's guys across the country, and uh, Daniel Madwet at Michigan, and guys at Florida, and you name it, there, there's guys out there, they're going to, they're, they're, you know, they're looking to win an NCAA championship themselves, so um, it's still going to be a good race come March. Now looking at the international landscape, or at least the American landscape when it comes to outside of college swimming, the 200 mm -hmm. fly, I mean, you know, it's Phelps' event since he was 16 years old, it seems like. But uh, that second spot, it's pretty wide open. I mean, what, how do you feel about your chances of 2012? Uh, you know, what I uh, did this summer gave me a lot of confidence going into 2012 and this next summer. And... I, you know, you have to keep improving. Uh, you know, what I went this summer, there's no way that'll make the 2012 team. And so it's just a matter of, you know, pushing myself and everybody's going to be pushing themselves. So it's just a matter of staying with your training, staying with what you know works for you. And, uh, you know, it's one race, one time at, you know, the big stage to uh, put yourself on the 2012 roster. What's a killer set that you do? I don't know that I do a single killer set. Um, what's a good, give, me, give me one good example, though, of what it's like to train with you. I mean, what's the, the hardest set of the week that you'll, that you'll do? Uh, Wednesday afternoons traditionally is a, a day where we do a series of 50s, um, you know, a short rest, and then... At right after that, you know, series where we're getting more rest, uh, maybe like three or four at a time, and we're, we're really just trying to work speed once I've, uh, you know, broken myself down pretty well with 
butterfly work before that on a tight interval. Um, I've done 50s on 40, 50s on 35 before, um, you know, and kept that interval real tight, you know, and then do a small, you know, 200 pull or something just to kind of uh, – get just a little bit of rest and then push the speed there. Uh, that's something, I think that's something that has helped me through the years. Uh, it's something I really enjoy that set. Um, and I think it, it really is geared toward a 200 type butterfly. So by that last one, your arms feel like they're a thousand pounds each and you feel like you're finishing a 200 fly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, go the whole goal is to, uh, wear yourself out, you know, with the tight interval and then work your speed, which, you know, that, that's the 200 butterfly for you. Yeah, that is why I did not swim the 200 butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark, have a good uh, Christmas training session there with Jack. Tell him we say hello, and good luck the rest of the year. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, that's Mark Dilla joining us from Georgia. That is it for today's show. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.